In this video, we'll be covering how to set up your IN100 to advertise as an iBeacon. We'll also be performing a few tests by changing up the data that we're advertising in the iBeacon format and using a mobile app that can scan for iBeacon data and iBeacon advertisement data and display and verify that we are sending out the correct data and receiving it on the other end. If you'll recall from the previous video tutorials, we covered that the advertising sets, it's really the core foundation and the core feature of the IN100 tag. So this defines the core functionality. It controls the data that the tag will broadcast for scanners to discover and read. And as we mentioned before, we have three advertising sets per tag that can be configured independently. And we can use different formats, for example, having one that is set up to be an iBeacon, the other one at Eddystone, and then finally the third being a custom data format. Now iBeacon in general is focused more on the proximity and location awareness functionality. So it would be specifying a tag ID that it would broadcast and conveys the proximity and being aware of the location of that beacon when the scanner discovers it. So iBeacon format is limited to advertising an ID and there are no other data types that are supported versus when using Eddystone you can include other data such as telemetry data that includes the voltage reading, the temperature, and others. So let's go ahead and go through an exercise of configuring the tag to use iBeacon format. And we'll do this just for the advertising set number one, which is enabled by default. I'm gonna go into edit and then make sure you have the advertising settings selected on the left side and then choose iBeacon and go into settings. By default, you'll have a UUID. You are free to use your own UUID and you can generate a UUID by going to special websites that can automatically generate them for you. One example is this website listed here and you can go navigate to that to customize your own UUID. Once you have the UUID entered in here, we have to use a major. So the major, the way it's used in iBeacons is it further specifies the generic area that the iBeacon is used in. So for example, you could be tied to a specific location. So if you have multiple locations for your devices and tags, you would have the UUID set to be constant across all your devices, but then you could choose the major to identify a specific location. So all the tags, within that specific location, physical location, for example, would have the same major ID. And that is specified by two bytes. It is in hexadecimal when we enter it into this field. Let's go ahead and just enter in 0001 as an example. The minor could be either a subregion within that main, the major region, or you could use it across multiple sites, for example. So you could have generic areas within different locations or within multiple locations. For example, if we're looking at a retail store, we could have the minor ID represent a specific type of aisle. So aisles for perishable items or produce, then that would be assigned an ID and it would be the same across the different locations. But the tags that are deployed in these locations or in these sub regions within that location would be unique in that the major and the minor together as a combination would kind of identify the specific tag at the specific location. Finally, we have the measured TX power, which is measured at one meter. The recommendation from Apple here is to take multiple measurements at different points and then use the average. For minor, I'm going to use 0002 as an example for this tag and then measure TX power, I'm gonna say it's about minus 40 dBm. Once we hit okay, now we are ready to run. So make sure you have your beacon or your tag connected to your computer. I'm going to go ahead and connect mine right now. We can go to device manager and make sure that the tag is recognized. Once you go into device manager, you can go and look at ports, COM and LP, LPT, and make sure that you have a USB serial with CH340 as a device that shows up with no errors or warnings. This is on COM7 in my case, so I'm going to hit probe and it matches COM7. Now we can connect to the device you'll be prompted with a dialogue telling you that it was successfully connected. We hit okay. And now we're actually ready to run in RAM. 
If you've run in RAM before, uh, you might want to reset the device, and that's done by hitting the reset button on the tag itself on the development kit, and then you can run in RAM again or make sure that, uh, that it works. So I just ran it now, and it looks like it was successful, so I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to head over to an Android app that I'm running called Beacon Scanner. This application specifically looks for Eddystone and iBeacon tags that are advertising in the area, so we are not bombarded with the many devices, many BLE devices that are advertising and only focusing on Eddystone and iBeacon. And it also provides a nice interface that parses the information that's included in those tags. Okay, let's switch over to the Android phone, the Android app, Beacon Scanner, and here I have it running. And I'm just going to hit play. And now it's discovering the iBeacons and Eddy Stones within the vicinity. And we can see we discovered one over here, and it matches the settings that we had. So if we go and look at the raw advertising data, we can see that we are using manufacturer-specific ID, and then for the major, we are using 01 and 02 for minor, and that's what matches here on our display. We can go ahead and block other devices, for example, so that it, they don't show up. But this here, the one that is classified as iBeacon, has the UUID that matches our UUID. So if I go back and look at the UUID, I can see that it starts with E2C5, and that matches here, and ends with 96E0. And the major is 01, or 0001, and the minor is 0002, and it shows us the RSSI that is being discovered at, as well as the TX power that we set. Let's go ahead and just make a few changes, just one more. I'm going to modify this to 10, which is 16, so we should see 16 for the minor. Let's go ahead and do 100 for the major. This is in hex again, so this will be 256, I believe. We'll hit OK. So now I need to reset the board in order to be able to run in RAM again. And if we look now, let's clear the display, the scan, and scan again. And we can see here that we discovered the iBeacon. And you can see here the major is 256, which matches 100 hex, and minor is 16, which matches 10 hex. So one of the other parameters that we could modify and notice and verify that it is being discovered and the tag using correctly is the advertising interval. So for advertising parameters, the default is one second or 1000 milliseconds. Let's go ahead and update it to 100 milliseconds. Now keep in mind when you update it and to something like 100 milliseconds from one millisecond, from 1000 milliseconds, you're gonna, going to be consuming a lot more power. So keep that in mind when setting the advertising interval for your tag. Now for this test, I'm going to be using the NRF Connect app on Android. And the reason behind that is that the NRF Connect app shows a lot more information and can read the advertising interval or calculates the advertising interval based on the captured advertising data and advertising packets. So let's go ahead and launch the NRF Connect mobile app. I have it here and I am filtering based on the Bluetooth address, which you can find under the advertising parameters. This is set per advertising set. So for each advertising packet that comes from an advertising set, you could have a different uh, Bluetooth address. In this case, I have it set to 0102, starting from the lowest significant byte up to 06. So when that gets displayed, it usually gets displayed in the app by the most significant byte to least significant, so it will be reversed. So we are now going to run in RAM and test with 100 milliseconds and verify that on the NRF Connect mobile app. So I'm gonna hit scan, and as you can see, it is reading and calculating the advertising interval and it's close to 100 milliseconds. Let's go back and change it back to 1,000 milliseconds and verify that that actually reflects in the NRF Connect mobile app. So I'm going to hit OK. 
make sure I reset the tag so we can run in RAM again. So I reset it by clicking, by hitting the reset button on the EVK itself. Once I hit run in RAM, I can now go ahead and refresh the scan in NRF Connect. And as you can see, now it's reflected and it's close to a thousand milliseconds. Let's do one more test and just update it to something much higher. Let's go for 3000 milliseconds or three seconds. Again, reset the tag as simple as it is. Run in RAM and refresh and you'll see that it should be close to 3000 milliseconds. And here we go. So that's really as simple as it is. We can just modify these settings, run in RAM when we're ready and we want to deploy this to the beacon that is permanent the permanent configuration, then we can do the burn and program button, and that will permanently burn this to the OTP on the tag, and then you can disconnect it from the programmer, plug in, put in a battery, and run it independently. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.